All right, welcome back everybody to another video on the After Hours channel. In this video, we're gonna be discussing how I managed to beat the S&P 500 by nearly 25% in 2023. And I managed to do this not by employing some complicated investing strategy or day trading or looking at candles and charts and you name it. No, I was able to do this with a very simplistic approach to investing. And to kick this video off, obviously we have to start with a portfolio up Update, which you can see right here. It's officially January 1st, so Happy New Year's to everybody. And for 2023, if we look, my portfolio increased by 48% or $30,000. Using SPY as a comparison, we can see that SPY went up 24%, just under 25% for 2023. That means I was able to nearly double the returns of the S&P 500 and here's exactly how I did it. We like to put a lot of money in things that, uh, that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, you know, we, we think diversification is, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, they, diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you wanna make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably, uh, because there aren't that many wonderful businesses at, that are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood. and it, and to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as, as madness. Now to add some context to that clip that I just played by Warren Buffett, one of the main ways I was able to outperform the market was not diversifying my portfolio. Yes, you heard me. I did not diversify my portfolio into 20 different stocks, 30 different stocks, or even more. What I did do was follow Warren Buffett's advice and his actual practices. Everybody has heard the age old saying, practice what they do, not what they say. Well, if we take a look at Warren Buffett's portfolio right here, we can see that only five companies make up this portfolio that are above 5% holding. And if we narrow that down even further, only one holding makes up 50% of the entire portfolio, and that is Apple. So for years, I fought with the concept that I had to diversify my portfolio because I've heard it so many times from so many investors, so many YouTubers, and a few financial advisors. But in 2023, that all changed when I decided to listen to my instincts, lean into the convictions that I have, and put my money where my mouth is. So similar to Warren Buffett, I did just that. And I invested all of my money into only a handful of companies, which were able to get me nearly 50% returns for the year. All of those companies are on your screen right here. Feel free to take a screenshot if you wanna look a little bit closer. But coming in at number one was Microsoft. One way I was able to have outsized returns was the fact that I was buying into highly profitable companies. Companies with cash flows that look like this consistently year after year going up. Not only that, but I am buying into businesses that pay a consistent dividend year after year and not only pay that dividend, but continue to increase it multiple times throughout the year. Microsoft is a prime example of this, increasing their dividend over the last 10 years by over 10%. If we go back to my Microsoft holding to use it as an example, you can see on the right-hand side that my average buying for this company was $250 per share. Now, putting that aside, I was actually buying into this company at $150 per share. And even when my portfolio was down seven. $17,000 during 2020 and 2021, I consistently leaned into that conviction and I knew that it was a great business that was at an extreme discount. Another company where I listened to my intuition and that was Apple, being up nearly 50% for the year. Trading at $192 right now, we can see down here at the bottom on the right hand side, my average buying cost was $131 per share. This holding alone is 22% of my total portfolio. 
show. Now, if I were to listen to the advice of everybody saying diversification is a must in your portfolio, I would not be able to make this video today. To further highlight this point, let's go listen to another clip by Warren Buffett back in the day to further illustrate what I'm talking about. There aren't 50 Coca-Colas. You know, there aren't 20. If there were, it'd be fine. We could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and, and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it. And, uh, and the truth is you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you have a really wonderful business is very well protected against, against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and, and, and the competition. I mean, you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition. And three of those will be better than 100 average businesses. Three of those will be better than a hundred average businesses. Those words have rang true in my ears for years now. I made the mistake early on investing into a ton of different companies that I really did not understand. I thought they were good investments at the time, otherwise I wouldn't put my money into them. But like many new investors out there, at the end of the year, I was left holding the bag. I was losing money, my returns were nowhere near the S&P 500 or some of my peers, and it really made me take a second to step back and reevaluate my total portfolio. After doing that in 2023, things drastically took a turn for the better. Not only is my portfolio up, but the fact that I don't have to worry about my investments as much as I did in the past is even more of a reward. When you understand the companies that you own, you understand their financials and how they actually make money, there is such a weight that gets lifted off of your shoulders to where you don't have to worry about those investments all the time. Yes, you definitely have to keep up with some of the earnings reports and any drastic changes in the company, but when you did the research beforehand, you know you own a great business. Another prime example of this is none other than Visa. This is a company I've been buying into for over a year now, and I I still think it is a buy in my opinion. When we talk about industry leaders and powerhouses of companies, Visa is absolutely in the discussion. In the last 10 years, they have increased their free cash flow by nearly 22%. That is massive. Not only that, but if we switch this to include stock-based compensation, we can see that the executive team is not taking advantage of shareholders by issuing a ton of stock to their employees. Moreover, Visa is a crazy dividend paying company, increasing their dividend last year by nearly 15% and in the last 10 years by 18%. Find me another business with the free cash flows of Visa and continuously paying out an increased dividend multiple times a year. To further put the icing on the cake, we take a look at their outstanding shares. They're not only making a ton of money and spending it wisely, but they're buying back their own shares, further increasing the shares that I own. Now you may be wondering, well, that's great and all. I'm glad you did well in 2023, but how does this help me going into 2024? For that question, I answer it like this. I look for industry leading companies that have a compounding effect. Stop chasing penny stocks, stop chasing companies that are on the hype, and look around at some of the best investors in the world and look at their top five holdings. See what they're buying into. Once you get a few ideas, start looking those businesses up. That is exactly how I found this company right here, United Health Group. United Health Group is a new addition to the portfolio, but one I am extremely excited about. This is a very recent purchase of mine, so I only have $6,000 invested. My average buying cost right now is $540. Year to date, this company is completely flat, being only in the negative $3. After I took a look at this company's financials, I did not think that that was justified. Let me show you why. If we take a look at the revenue for United Health, it has been explosive. Okay, the revenue looks good. What about the EBITDA? Same exact thing. Explosive growth year after year. Well, Anthony, what about the free cash flow? Same thing. Explosive growth year after year. And this is when I started to really get excited. I thought, let me check to see how much they're paying their employees in stock-based compensation. In 2022, they made $23 billion in free cash flow and they only paid out 925 million in stock. Not only that, but if we look at this blue line right here, we can see that it's not increasing substantially over time. Therefore, they have more money on hand to invest back into the company, to buy back their own shares, and to make new acquisitions. All right, well, this is a dividend portfolio, so let's take a look at the dividend and same exact thing, explosive growth year after year. 
In the last 10 years, they've increased their dividend by 21%. So not only are you getting the capital appreciation of the gains from this company, but that snowball is continuing to roll down the hill and you're getting paid out bigger and bigger dividends over time. Jumping back to SPY real quick, I want to highlight a few things here as well. If we take a look at the sectors and the percentage that they have invested, we can see that the technology sector alone in SPY makes up 30%. If you're a visual person like me, you can see this box right here, much larger than all of the other ones. So you may be wondering what companies actually make up this 30% and how much do they have invested? Scroll right down here and we can see the top 10 holdings in SPY. Up there at the top left, we can see that it makes up 30% of the total assets in SPY, just the top 10 holdings alone. If we do the same thing we did with Warren Buffett's portfolio and just look at any holding above 5%, we can see it's only two companies, Apple and Microsoft. Apple makes up 7%, Microsoft makes up just under 7%. So if we wanna have outsized returns in our portfolio, why wouldn't we just invest our money in the top businesses? Why should I worry about the bottom half of that top 10 list? Now I'm not saying these aren't great businesses, that's not what I'm saying, but I am highlighting the fact that when you're high grading your portfolio, which I'm doing right now, I am only focusing on industry leaders, the top of the top 1%, where it is beyond a shadow of a doubt that this company will continue for the next 10 years and they are continuing to make money hand over fist and managing it well. Now you may be wondering, well, when is diversification a good idea? And I'll talk about that right now. Diversification is a good idea when you are not an informed investor, when you want a completely hands-off approach. If you're not gonna be looking at the financials of companies, doing in-depth analysis, and keeping up with earnings reports every few months, or taking a look at the breaking news if there was a scandal with the management team, then this is probably when diversification is for you. A prime example of this would be my holding right here, SCHD. SCHD is Schwab's US Dividend ETF. As you can see for the year, it has been completely flat. This holding alone makes up nearly $20,000 of my portfolio, and I have an average buy-in of $76 per share. If we take a look at their top sectors, we can see right here the number one sector in this ETF is industrials. In close second, we have the financial services and then you got healthcare. Those are the top three. Now, whether you're diversifying or you're buying individual companies, it's always important to take a look at what holdings are actually within an ETF that you own. So we'll do that right here. Top 10 holdings in SEHD are right here on your screen. Now, if you were to go look into every single one of these businesses, I don't think you would be too upset. They're not bad businesses. If anything, they're extremely low volatility for the most part. And not only that, they pay a pretty high dividend, which is where this ETF gets its name. Taking a look at the yield over the last 30 days, it's nearly 3.6%. So not only are you buying an ETF with 104 holdings, but you're getting quarterly dividend payments. Now, there's many great options out there as far as ETFs, and it all depends on your investing style and your short-term or long-term goals. So don't just look at SCHD because it's in my portfolio or any of the companies for that matter, but I'm simply highlighting the fact that there are other options out there. You don't don't have to copy my portfolio. In fact, I recommend that you don't. Just because I had great gains this year doesn't mean next year won't be an absolute disaster. I fully understand that. But this kind of investing takes not only the knowledge to do some of the in-depth analysis on these companies and understand the financials, but it takes a strong stomach as well. When these companies are in the negative big time, and you're losing tens of thousands of dollars, that is really when you are tested as an investor. That's when you understand that this is something you can manage and not do an emotional sell or get FOMO, fear, missing out, and buy into a company that's been racing up and then again, you're left holding the bag and you're losing money. So to wrap this video up, in 2024, nothing's really changing. I'm going to continue to buy into great companies like United Health Group, Microsoft if it takes a substantial dip in the future, and industry-leading companies like Visa. If that sounds like something you're interested in and you want to stick around for the journey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and you got any value out of it. But that is gonna wrap this one up. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a great investing year for 2024. Happy New Year's, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.